In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at these current conditions where we do have this major storm across a lot of the middle of the country taking place. So we'll take a deep dive into that. Also, there's a lot of information regarding the upcoming snowfall chances and the very cold air. We're going to compare the European model to the European Ensemble model to show you guys why I'm very confident in this cold air finally taking place. Now, we can see on our current conditions that first off, our precipitation typing is messing up, which is a pretty common occurrence here on WSV3, unfortunately. Uh, and we're also going to be just diving into this storm. Uh, we can see that the low pressure center is somewhere there in between Nebraska and Kansas. And just as we anticipated, there is plenty of severe weather taking place right ahead of this cold front. I actually am amazed at how far ahead we called this. Um, we actually have a sort of tornado emergency happening in here. Uh, it appears like there's an actual tornado that took place just in the northern suburbs of Dallas. I'm just noticing that. So let's see. Uh, near, uh, what is that called? I can't see. Grapevine, Louisville, Carrollton. In this area, we had a tornadic uh, supercell take place that actually did have a reported tornado with it. I don't know anything about it, so I don't know if it was a major tornado or anything of that nature. Um, but we did have reports of at least a funnel cloud there with that storm. And now we're coming in and we see this purple warning here uh, which means I think that it's an observed tornado yeah that's correct so there is an observed tornado again taking place with that same supercell now over Oklahoma uh, and that is let me get it all the way to current information it's heading towards Smithfield Oklahoma so this video will obviously be out too late for this to really uh, for me to warn you guys about this but it is currently in the southeastern corner of Oklahoma there. And as kind of expected, we can see a lot of this uh, warm sector here in this severe weather event just surging northward with a lot of these uh, isolated thunderstorms ahead of the cold front. And then we can see the actual cold front right there uh, with this line of thunderstorms taking place still in Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, and Missouri. Certainly more severe weather on the way, unfortunately, so we need to watch for that as well. As we work our way further north, it looks more and more like showers and less like thunderstorms here. So for states like uh, Kansas, Missouri, Iowa, and Illinois, this is going to be much more of just a rainfall event. And then as we work our way northwest from there, we can see that there is a major snowstorm obviously taking place. Here for a lot of the plains, there for Nebraska, the Dakotas, and then we can see for Montana, Wyoming, Colorado as well. Very, very major snowstorm here. And especially here on the ranges of South or South Dakota, better yet, and Nebraska. Here we have very heavy snowfall in these blues. I'm so sorry about the, the messing up there of the precipitation typing. That's getting so annoying. But the whites and the blues there, or when it switches over to green and yellow, that's going to be extremely heavy snowfall in those blue areas. Uh, certainly an area where whiteout conditions are taking place. And you can just tell by the rotation of this storm that it is a very major one. Uh, certainly something to watch. And this will eventually be our northeast snowstorm. So that's an interesting fact as well. Uh, this will all kind of uh, move its way down here and then move up the coast. And this is going to bring snowfall to the interior northeastern United States. So we're going to be tracking that. And actually what we're going to do is we're just going to move on and we're going to finally take a look at that. We're going to take a look at the model guidance regarding that storm and future potential snowstorms. And then we're going to show you guys why the European model itself is not buying the cold air quite yet. But the European Ensemble model is calling for deep Arctic air in the eastern United States and why those two models aren't connecting on that fact. So we're going to move on and talk about those things. So as we take a look at the upcoming storminess, we could see that by the time we are reaching into tomorrow afternoon, we are going to be seeing a lot of these thunderstorms moving into the deeper south areas. So I'm thinking uh, basically Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama, and Tennessee is going to be the area to watch for tomorrow for severe weather. We can see that snowfall still occurring up there in the upper Midwest and the central plains and the northern plains there certainly taking place. Uh, so that's also needing to be watched. And as we just continue on with this, we can see for the northeast, and we'll zoom into this area like we've been doing the past few days. Um, and as you can see, we have some freezing rain taking place in these pink areas here. Blues here, we're seeing plenty of this snowfall there for New York, Pennsylvania, and up through New Jersey. And it, things just get colder uh, as we're reaching Thursday night into Friday morning. So we see more of these areas switching over to snowfall for central Pennsylvania, uh, the Finger Lakes regions there of New York, and even the uh, Catskills as well, looking very, 
very snowy and, and actually very heavy snowfall uh, included with this snowfall event. And honestly, as we just watch these model trends day after day, it is looking a bit colder. The solution, we see less of those valleys seeing rainfall, more snowfall mixing in further south towards the coast and in lower elevation areas. So these models are trending at a colder solution for uh, this storm. So that's certainly something to watch and pay attention to for the most part. As we continue this on, though, we do see the low does move closer and closer to the coast, and that means a little bit of some mixing for some areas that were seeing snowfall for a while there, and then things come to an end. Real quickly, we will take a look at the total snowfall um, here. Let me just make sure we're at the right model here. Yeah, so once that storm is said and done, which will be about Sunday here, uh, we can see that we are left with... Um, Anywhere in the gray, seeing a dusting, if anything. Blues, 2 to 6 inches of snowfall. Purple, 6 to 10. Pinks, 10 to 20 there. Your pastel blues, which we see for the Adirondacks, uh, the Catskills, the Green Mountains, and the White Mountains there, as well as the northern mountainous regions of Maine. We see all of these areas seeing 20 to even 35 inches of snowfall there. So certainly a heavy snowfall event. That's, that's kind of a no-brainer there. Uh, but this is going to be our first major northeast snowstorm of the year. And I'm so excited to be tracking this daily. It's been so long since I've mentioned this, but you can join our Facebook group, which is in the pinned comment and description down below, Weather Freaks, because there has been frequent discussions, including with myself, about this storm. And we're tracking it every single model run during the day. It's been so fun tracking it. And we'll also do that for future storms. So feel free to join that as well. Uh, let's just move on and talk about the total precipitation through the nation. Actually, we didn't even discuss what we needed to discuss here. So let's move back. I'm getting a little bit too ahead of myself there. Uh, we didn't even talk about the future storms yet. So after that storm comes to an end, uh, we will see a lot of cold air in place first off for the eastern United States here. But this comes to an end pretty quickly according to this model as we see a southeast ridge building again. I know this is what everybody doesn't want to hear. But we see a southeast ridge building in here again. And then that trough is mostly centered over the western United States jet stream doing about like this where the deepest cold air is moving into the west, and that allows for this warmth to push up the east coast. And what this leaves us with is a pattern where the, the snowfall really targets this portion of the nation, uh, maybe even more west-based than that, like this portion of the nation, kind of excluding these areas here. So it's going to slide to the west of those areas if this southeast ridge continues to push warm air up, and we would see the jet stream doing this, basically. Um, that's what this model shows. So we'll revisit that in a second. Total precipitation through the next 10 days. Anywhere in the whites, we're expecting practically no precipitation. Your grays, a tenth of an inch or less. Your greens, a tenth of an inch to half an inch. Your blues, a half an inch to an inch. Your yellows, an inch to two inches. Reds, two to five inches there. And then your browns, five to ten. We can see that the reds and browns are all set up over the eastern United States. So whether the cold is in the west or the east, we do expect a lot of the storminess to be over the eastern half of the nation. Uh, and even in this area, especially here, we can see large amounts of rainfall. Um, but something to note is that if we do get the cold air heading into the east, which we do have reason to believe that's that's a good possibility at this point, um, that would mean plenty of snowfall opportunities for these areas here. Basically, everywhere in the east that typically has any chance of seeing snowfall will have some chance of seeing snowfall in the month of December if our European Ensemble model is correct. But if the European model is correct, we might have to put that on hold. I'll explain in a second, and I know it's getting kind of confusing here. Now, total snowfall through the next 10 days. This is the whole nation here. The grays, the dusting, if anything. Blues, 2 to 6 inches of snowfall. Purple, 6 to 10. Pinks, 10 to 20 there. Your pastel blues, 20 to 35. And then your pastel pinks within those blues, which I'm not really seeing any of it, but just to mention it, that's going to be 35 inches plus. We might have a little bit there between Nebraska and South Dakota there. But that's about it. Now... The temperature pattern, according to the European model, looks like this. We do get this backdoor cold air still moving down the east coast, and then we're going to see the cold front swing through and actually bring cold air into the east with that snowstorm we're expecting this weekend. So look at that. We see the cold air push in. So we see there's a flow of Arctic air probably moving across the nation just like this. But what happens is, just like we've been seeing, um, the southeast ridge plays too much of a role here. As you can see, by the time we're reaching Wednesday the 21st, and look at where all this deep Arctic air is located. Still in the western half of the nation, and from there it just kind of moves south and can't beat out this southeast ridge. So the east is left really just mild, 
And then everywhere else in the nation here by this point, this would be the 23rd of December, is seeing historically cold temperatures according to this model. All those pink areas in there is maxed out cold air, so below 33 degrees below normal for all of these pink regions, which is pretty much every single western state. I, I mean, what this model is showing this morning here would probably be the, the most brutal cooldown I've ever seen on a single model run, um, let alone if it actually panned out. I mean, who knows? But if the European Ensemble model is correct, all this would be headed to the east instead of the west, which would be especially historic, I believe, because uh, the west does sometimes see very, very intense cooldowns like this. Not, I don't think, to this extent, but very close to it. But for the East, it's a much rarer occurrence. I think the last time would maybe be 2013 to 2014 or 2014 to 2015. Something like eight years ago, I would say, is the last time we saw this. And it isn't even an every year occurrence. So uh, might be the once every 10 or more year occurrence for the East to see anything remotely close to this. Um, but obviously, we're not seeing that there here. But when we look at the European Ensemble model, which is multiple members put together, we're going to get a better long-range look with this model, okay? This model is better at handling things in the long range than the European model is because the European model is only one computer just doing all the work and putting its opinion out there. This is, I I want to say this one is 20 different members uh, put together into a mean average. So we're getting a much more, uh, a much better opinion. So here's uh, when we would see that cold front roll through. So we're seeing the same thing to this point, right? Cold front rolling through here. This is what we just saw in the European model a minute, a minute ago. But what we see is that the southeast ridge very, very briefly enters in. But by the 21st and 22nd, we can see that the majority of the cold air is located here, uh, not just over the western United States here. I mean, there is a lot up here, but you can tell that the flow is sort of like this. So we're seeing a lot more of this enter into the east. And honestly, to put it right on the same frame that we just saw in the European model, this is the frame here. So this is what the European model shows on Friday, the 23rd of December. This is what the European model ensemble model shows on Friday, the 23rd. Uh, uh, obviously, a massive difference here. A lot of this cold air is spreading into the eastern United States here. Uh, obviously, our jet stream would be flowing something like this, maybe even um, something like this. And if that is the case... Clearly, there's going to be plenty of snowfall opportunities in the eastern half of the nation, right along where those nor'easters would be moving, according to this European Ensemble model. And as we continue this on towards Christmas Day, look at that. Uh, even as we go beyond, we could see maybe a positive PNA developing in here, which really sends all that cold air into the eastern United States, getting even colder here for Christmas week. So this is like dream. Uh, a dream pattern for me, in my opinion, um, for Christmas. Uh, snowfall potential will be through the roof. And even as we approach the 28th here of December, take this with a grain of salt, but we can see this: the cold is still over the east. So this would not only be a huge cooldown, it would also be a very sustained cooldown, uh, possibly weeks and weeks long of Arctic air in the eastern United States with plenty of snowfall opportunities. And this PNA getting more and more favorable as time moves on. Uh, as we go beyond, I would say, even just five to seven days, it is a known thing that probably the ensemble models, not even probably, definitely the ensemble models, is going to give you a safer bet as to what's going to happen beyond days seven and ten, especially, than the deterministic model, which would be our typical European model here, uh, which is, again, just one model. So there's nothing to... Um, there's nothing to really average this out because it's only one opinion. But when you take the opinion of uh, 20 different members here and you get the mean average and it's still showing far below normal temperatures here, that tells you that at least 15 of those 20 are showing this solution, if not potentially a couple more there, um, which gives you an idea of what the odds are of something like this happening. So I hope that makes sense. I know it gets a little bit confusing here. Um, and... Really what I would like to see is the European model come in alongside the European Ensemble model here and show a similar solution because then confidence would be through the roof. So we're going to be waiting for that. Tune in daily as we do upload every single day. You can even hit the subscribe button to get that in your subscription box. Even hit the bell icon to get daily notifications. 
when we do upload, because it is every single day, like I mentioned. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I will see you guys in the next video.